here is the box that has the tile in it that I bought from Parliament. That's it there. If we look on the back, it says something patent Stoke-on-Trent. On the card, which is here, the encaustic tile was removed from the Royal Gallery in the Palace of Westminster. And the tile was designed by Augustus Welby Pugin between 1846 and 1852 and was originally produced by Herbert Minton of Stoke-on-Trent. So what I want to try and do, because I'm going to Stoke-on-Trent in the next few days, and I want to try and find out about what records survive of Herbert Minton of Stoke-on-Trent. And I have absolutely no idea what records do survive. So let's just see what I can find out. Herbert Minton, Stoke-on-Trent. There's something on Wikipedia about this guy. They were known as Mintons. Gosh, there's quite a few things here. Okay, Minton's Pottery. Household of Herbert Minton. The Minton Archive. So this is telling us a bit about Herbert Minton himself. Uh, Herbert Minton, 1793 to 1858. Manufacturer of pottery and porcelain. He was born at Stoke-on-Trent on the 4th of February, 1793. Right, so about 1800, some 50 hands were employed at the works, but when Minton died, the number reached 1500. I mean, I'm really interested in the people that made this. I re I'm really interested in them to see if we can identify some of them. We're not gonna know exactly who made it, but we'll be able to find maybe some of them in the records, if we can, and maybe on the censuses, just to bring the tile to life a bit and its story. So I'm less interested in Minton as a person. I'm really interested in the, in the workers who made the tiles. This is about Minton's. So this is on Wikipedia. It ran from 1793 to 1968. So it didn't close that long ago, did it? Oh, look at that. Look, Minton's in caustic floor at the United States Capitol. That's interesting. So Minton's did that. I didn't know that. St George's Cathedral, Southwark. So there's tiles for there too. I used to sell encaustic tiles when I when I worked in a tile place. So it's interesting. The factory founded in Stoke and Trent in 1793 to six by Thomas Minton, and then was succeeded on his death by his son Herbert Minton. And so Herbert Minton's the one who was around at the time they were producing these tiles between 1846 and 1852. This is a picture online of Minton's Pottery, London Road, Stoke-on-Trent. And look at it there, taken 1967 to 1970. Front view of Minton's Pottery Factory awaiting demolition. It's sad, isn't it? So that must be where the kiln was. Oh, it's telling me to hover around. Look at all those bricks and what the kiln must have been below that bit, was it? Look at those broken old windows. Thomas Minton founded his factory on London Road, Stoke-on-Trent. In 1793 to 1796, fine. Herbert Minton, that's what we know. Right, at the time it closed, the factory was part of Royal Dalton Group. Oh, that's a shame. Look, it was closed in 2002. And the rainy buildings were demolished to make way for JS Sainsbury's supermarket, which opened in 2003. It says here, in 1845, Herbert Minton took Michael Dainty Hollins into partnership creating the tile making company Minton Hollins & Co. And then in 1869, a new purpose-built factory was erected on Shelter Road. So, so hang on, so this, this thing from the Palace of Westminster, let me just get this right. This says it was designed by Augustus Welby Pugin between 1846 and 1852 and was originally produced by Herbert Minton of Stoke-on-Trent. But it looks like actually the company at that time must have been Minton Hollins & Co., then we've got this, the Minton Archive. Oh, this, this, is, this is quite exciting. Look, what, what is this? Oh, look at these pictures. So this is all the archive. Look, all these tiles. Goodness, this, this is really interesting. Oh, look, the car. Oh, goodness. Well, look, well I don't know. It's, it's almost like everything you hoped for, really, because all the archive is there at the Stoke-on-Trent archives. Right, it's only been there since 2015. The Minton Archive was generously gifted to the city in March 2015 by the Art Fund. 
Since then, work on this enormous archive has been taking place at Stoke-on-Trent City Archives, where we have collected the entire archive together, arranged it and fitted it on our shelves. Wow. So the record is part of the archive collection of Royal Dalton, and we saw about that, didn't we, that it was under Dalton when it closed. The Minton Archive is the name given to the whole of this collection. The full Minton Company catalogue, alongside an ever-growing selection of highlighted records, is also accessible here on the site. Start exploring now. Crack, it feels a bit like... I don't know where to start. I feel like there's all these things in the air. Where do I go? How do I find out about these people? I'm only looking at who made these tiles. It's the only thing I'm interested in. I'm interested in the workers. That's, that's it. Not the design, nothing else. Just the people who made them. It's hoped that similar work will be undertaken on other Minton Archive Collection Company records. What is featured on this site is just a taste of what will be possible to achieve in future externally funded projects. The Minton Company records containing well over 5,000 entries were catalogued for the company by Alan Giles Jones over three decades. Our work to enhance his excellent catalogue by placing it online is now complete and we are continuing to add images from some of the original archives all accessible via this website. So we can actually see loads of stuff online from our homes about these people. Gosh, so if you've got any ancestors from Stoke-on-Trent, you might find them in these archives. If, if the employee records are there, I don't know what is here. Once these records and images have whetted your appetite, you can come and see the real thing at Stoke-on-Trent City Archives. Gosh, look at it all. Oh, look, this is what we want, look. The Minton Company records are a relatively complete record of the Minton factory. Through these records, you can find out about how the factory was managed, how the ware was produced, marketed and sold, and who was employed by the factory and what they did. You know, when I bought that tile in the House of Parliament, I never imagined that there'd be such an amazing archive online like this. I, I can't believe it, really. I'm finding this so exciting. Look, we want to go to employees. A remarkable feature of the Minton Company catalogue is the survival of employee records from apprenticeship records and wage books to artists' contracts and Minton Social Club records. Oh, this is interesting. What is that one? Register of Apprentice Burnishers. Giving the names of parents. Look at all these sketches. Look at, look at that. Gosh, and on this archive you can just see all of these sketches and drawings. Look at that one. I mean, how old is that? 1911. Doesn't that look fresh and, and almost modern, doesn't it, in some ways? Well, especially these big dots. There's some more apprentices and agreements here. There's some more books on this. There's only four pages, it seems, for the employee records on online. This is 1859. Hang on, so this is this is still after, because we're looking up to the period of eight, up to 1852. That's 1876. So again, this is after my time. That's 1859. So let's have a look at the Stoke-on-Trent City archives and see when they're open. So, we prefer that you contact us by... Oh, no. Oh, dear. Our reading room is temporarily closed due to move preparation work and moving as shown below. Oh, however, we will listen to any messages left over. Oh, dear, that's a shame, isn't it? Stoke-on-Trent City Archives is moving, is moving. Keep up to date as we head next door to our new home in the Potteries Museum and Art Gallery. Right, what is the Potteries Museum and Art Gallery? Okay, over the next few months, Stoke-on-Trent City Archives will be transferred to a new location in the Potteries Museum and Art Gallery. This means everything in our stores and our public reading room has to be moved, which will cause some disruption to our normal services. On this website, you can find out about our current on-site access and see a basic timeline for the move. There's also some extra information for depositors. Okay. Okay, access is currently limited. Timeline of the move. November 2022, reading room open for bookings. December 2022, some access restrictions apply. June 2023, construction begins. January 2024, disruption likely as the archive moves. The relocated reading room opens. 
As we work on the move, we'll be blogging about the process to keep you in the loop. There'll be updates. Let's check out the moving blog, Lynn. Let's have a look. If you visit the Potteries Museum and Art Gallery over the next few months, you might spot the freshly screened off area down on the lower ground floor just behind the temporary exhibition is the new reading rooms under construction. The Potteries Museum. We are now open Wednesday to Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Right. Oh, that's that famous owl, isn't it? That's the owl that was on Antiques Roadshow, I think. Let's contact someone in this archive, and that's what we need to do. Contact us. Let's have a little look. Minton Archive Employee Records. Early this year, I purchased a tile from the gift shop in the Palace of Westminster that had been removed. It was made in Stoke-on-Trent between 1846 and 1852, and as I am very much interested in genealogy and workers' stories, I would love to try and find out more about the people who made this tile. I note the Minton Archive is with you, and there are employee records amongst the documents, but I wonder if you can tell me what survives in your archive to identify the people employed in this period who would have made the tiles for the UK Parliament building. Let's send that off and see what comes back.